Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. And I've got a really good one for you today because uh, I am in Newport Beach at the Wedge. It's kind of rainy and misty out right now. It's actually cold here. It's 60 degrees. I have a jacket on. People are like, that's not cold, Dan. Anyways, got a lot of cool stuff to cover. Um, they could start rationing food soon. Uh, it's going to be one of the coldest winters on record and uh, there's a lot to cover about this plus the national news some crypto stuff and things that are happening in the economy that are going to affect each and every one of us uh, before i get into it please take a second hit the like button uh, please hit the subscribe button and again share this with all your friends and colleagues uh, we have an email list and we've got a really good email blast going out this week with some grants and things like that and that everybody will want to get so in the video description below, you can join the email list and uh, just click on it. It'll get your information and it's absolutely free and uh, gets you some good information in the coming weeks. We're going to start sending emails out on a regular basis now and you don't want to miss the stuff because it's different stuff that's not in the channel. Uh, right now, the UK is presenting different options as far as rationing food and meat. Um, and what they do that I get a kick out of is they start to bring celebrities out to have them make suggestions. And Joanna Lumley is an actress that was on a TV show called Absolutely Fabulous. And uh, we got glimpses of it here in the United States. It was funny. It was basically uh, two yentas that were out that over drink and, you know, flirt with men and, and just, you know, hijinks ensue. But uh, anyways, the show was pretty funny. I mean, I never watched it a lot but I saw enough of it to understand it. And, uh, uh, you know, she's a decent actress. But uh, anyways, her whole thing is that we need to get back to a wartime rationing of uh, meat and supplies right now. In other words, you would get a point system, which is ridiculous. You know, you get so many points, you'd be able to get a chicken. You'd be able to get uh, vegetables, milk, and things like that. And I personally think that this is horrible, okay? I And again, guys, the discussion of this in the UK and here in the United States, it's been presented as well. I would really, really, really recommend that you guys go out and stock up on whatever you can right now because when the health crisis started, they did limit supplies of toilet paper and certain food and milk and eggs and things like that. I saw it and uh, you know, I've told this story to my friends a bunch of times and there's a store here in Southern California called Grocery Outlet. Grocery Outlet is a discount type chain. It's kind of a mini warehouse type store where you get deals on stuff and they have, you know, certain discounted items and things like that. But they sell, you know, bread, milk, meat, vegetables, you know, uh, you know, aspirin, a little bit of everything and alcohol. You know, it's 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 just a nice little store chain, you know. I shop at the local one. I see these guys a lot, people in there a lot. But there was one guy that I'd seen just a few times, you know, in the store and never really had a conversation with him. But uh, one day as I'm walking in, I'm, you know, getting my cart ready and putting it to the side. And this guy walks in behind me and it's the guy I'd seen before. And they were like, hey, don't try to pull that again. As he walks in, he's like, okay, okay. So, you know, gets my attention. And, uh, so I'm walking through the store. I'm in the back. He's like, hey, come here. Can I ask you a question? I'm like, what? He goes, can you buy a gallon of milk for me? And I thought he needed me to buy the milk for him. And I'm like, okay, what's probably, you don't have money for milk, but he had other stuff with him. He said, no, they're only limiting me to one gallon of milk at a time. And there's eight people in my family. Milk won't even last through a meal. I'm like, really? Okay, I, I couldn't believe it. So I'm like, I go, sure, I'll help you. So I went and bought the milk. I bought it and gave it to him. But again, you know, the reprimand that that woman gave him when he walked in was him wanting to buy two gallons of milk at a time for his six kids and his wife, okay? So we're going to see this again, guys. You're gonna see rationing of foods. You're going to see um, limitations put on people. Uh, when it comes to buying stuff. So get it now. Now, you can't buy milk, you know, 
for two months in advance. People that tell me you can freeze it, it tastes horrible. One thing you can do though is, uh, my girlfriend turned me on to this, and that is uh, organic milk lasts so much longer than regular milk. I mean, it la look at it, just do yourself a favor. Dan, it's so much more expensive, it's like a dollar more a gallon, whatever. But go look at it at the store, go look at the dates and compare it to regular milk. And it, there, I guarantee it'll be at least a month further out than your regular milk is. So ever since then, all I buy is organic milk and it never goes bad in my house. So don't have the kids in the house, so milk's not getting drank like it did, you know, two years ago. But uh, take a look at the organic milk and it's worth spending the extra money on it. Uh, I had somebody that wanted me to come out to the wedge. This is the wedge, which has got some of the biggest waves in California and, and around the world, and it is dead today. There is absolutely nobody out here. There's a couple seals out there. Oh my gosh, there's uh, uh, dolphins out there too. Kind of cool, but uh, nice, man. But anyways, there's no zero activity out here. Great place to walk and beat the storm. So, you know, share your thoughts on this stuff, guys. Do you think that there's gonna be food rationing again? I do. I think that the supply chain mess uh, that's happening and them bringing out celebrities to recommend these, you know, this is what we should do is, is nuts, okay? I never understood this. The very first script that I wrote was a short movie that somebody recommended, oh, Dan, you wanna get a movie made? I never got this made, but I wrote this and it got other attention that sold scripts. Anyways, the script was about a guy that wins a film festival and uh, he directs his first movie and the studio says, well, you need to have uh, your team and here's your media team. And this is, gosh, guys, this is 20 some years ago. And you're going to go out and not get wet. <sighs> and you need to have a cause that you can promote. Uh, and uh, the guy's like, what? I, I made a movie, what, who cares what I think? Well, you're a celebrity now, everybody cares what you think. So I could go on with this whole thing, but I never understood this with celebrities. So Joanna Lumley, I don't understand why it matters what she thinks. She's getting lambasted in the press there. There's other people, other celebrities that are saying that she's an imbecile in the UK. So share your thoughts on this guys and what you think about this. And uh, you know, do you think they're gonna get back to rationing? I think that if, there, if the supply chain issue continues to crumble the way that it has, it's going to happen, I really do. But you can prevent that. Remember, you'd rather be ready than have to get ready. Just try to get some extra supplies, try to get extra food, try to get things that are, you know, that have a long shelf life that, that you can use for an extended period of time. And you'll be so much better, you'll sleep better at night. You know, no one ever was hurt by being a little prepared, remember that. There's another great article that goes along with this and that there's a woman named Carol Malone who says that uh, Joanna Lumley is absolutely hypocritical in this and that uh, Joanna Lumley is also talking about this helping the climate and eating less will help with climate change. Huh? Okay, so uh, Carol Malone, the article's below, ripping on Joanna Lumley. And again, we have a supply chain problem, guys. You can't see the boats out there because of the uh, because of the bad weather, inclement weather. But uh, you know, it was just a matter of time until somebody got fed up with their side being accused of uh, uh, on this whole supply chain thing. And there's a great article from a truck driver talking about how this is not their fault. This is not this problem does not rest on the shoulders of the truck drivers. And again. I don't think it does. You know, I don't think it rests just, you know, on the shoulders of the people in the port either. I think that there's a lot more to this, you know, uh, problem. But uh, again, if you're accused over and over and over again, we have such a, a ridiculous uh, problem with uh, the emissions and things that were put on these truck drivers that make it near impossible for somebody to be a small independent trucker uh, and work in this industry right now when it comes to the ports. Uh, they've made, they've changed uh, 
uh, the dates that, you know, your, your car can only be so old, your truck, excuse me, can only be so old, and it's absolutely affected uh, so much of this. So, uh, you know, share your thoughts and all this stuff. Take a look at the article uh, in the video description below. But uh, how do you guys feel about all this stuff? I just think that the supply chain problem is not going to mellow out anytime soon. Now, here's one other thing about that that's, that makes it a real problem, and that is, uh, you know, the ports are all ran by the union. There are articles now that I'll include with this that talk about how the union uh, could potentially strike in early 2022 uh, if they don't get a new contract. Again, again, okay, a little early to be talking about this, but they're kind of setting us up for the delay could be even worse, and this could uh, continue through next summer. So, you know, this is happening at so many ports around the world. Now, Texas and Florida have said, come here, we're open, you guys don't have the problems here, but they're setting this whole thing up to have a massive, massive uh, strike that could delay things even more. So, you know, share your thoughts on all this stuff. Share your thoughts on the truck drivers. Share your thoughts on should the union strike. Again, I'm all for people having good wages. I'm also for stuff getting moved and, and unloaded off those trucks, off those uh, uh, containers and put on trucks and shipped to where they're supposed to go. Um, again, I was last time I was here is when I met the guy from the electronics industry, uh, Christopher, that told me that they ship everything via uh, planes. They do not use uh, the uh, um, they do not use uh, uh, the ships anymore. And they basically broke down how do you how do you afford this? Well, we know how big of an area we can get on the plane and the container, and we package orders and we tell people, you know, hey Ted, do you want your order? Your end of it's going to cost eighty dollars more, and you'll get it next week over God knows when. Okay, and all they all say, oh, I'll pay that. I'll pay eighty dollars more. I'll pay this. Now, when you divide it up by 12, 15, 18, 20 customers, it pays for itself. So, share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys, because uh, you know this is not ending. Okay, this is not slowing down, guys. Okay. So there's nobody out here. This is the wedge. You can see the water coming in. Just beautiful and peaceful. But uh, the rumors of high surf have been disproven. Now, as we get colder weather, the big problem around the country is increased uh, prices for heating your home. And this is everywhere. Now, Eversource is the energy company in Connecticut. They're already uh, having double-digit inflation on uh, the prices of uh, uh, natural gas. Uh, heating oil in New York uh, has gone up 57% uh, this year. 57%, guys. That's unbelievable. So, you know, we have natural gas here, and uh, Southern California Gas is our gas company uh, in most of the state, and uh, gone up a ton, guys. And it's, again, the average... Uh, energy cost is going to go up 34% this year. 34%. So think about this. You know, you pay a hundred bucks, easily just say $134 a year. Who can afford this? It's not something that's just going to be, you know, easy to accept, but you're seeing this around the country. People will starve. People will make decisions based on heating and cooling their house. That is horrible. We won't eat, but we'll cool the house or heat the house. Excuse me. And uh, I, I, I never understood that. Now, again, guys, I joke about it being 60 degrees out here and being cold. And, you know, there's places around the country where it's already snowing. And, uh, you know, I get a kick out of people that say, hey, come to this state, come to Idaho, it's fantastic. And you can get snow in May in Idaho. So I don't understand that. I don't like snow. Snow's fun for an hour. But uh, it's cold, guys, and people need to to be able to do something to take care of themselves. And this is so expensive right now that the average person cannot afford this. It is mind blowing how much this is gonna go up this year. And it seems that nobody's really dealing with this. And it's just like, 
Like, don't talk about it. Well, it's horrible. It's got to be talked about. So, you know, from growing up in the home improvement industry, one, the best thing you can do for your house is do, an, do your own energy audit on your house. You can hire a professional to come out there and they can tell you where you have drafts and things like that. The problem with it is that they're going to want to sell you expensive insulation and uh, uh, solar energy and shenanigans like that, which is incredibly expensive and, and I don't really recommend it. Um, you don't want to buy a heater during the winter. You don't want to buy an air conditioner during the summer. But what you can do is go through your house and see where the energy is escaping, where you're getting drafts from. Do your own weather stripping. Do your own sealing. Seal off rooms. Seal off vents. If you don't use a room, seal off the vents so that it, uh, you know, you're not in there. It's not wasting energy. It's easier to cool part of the house than the whole house. Remember that. So share your thoughts on this because I don't know what's going to happen with these people that that are on fixed incomes that are going to be absolutely, you know, blindsided by these huge uh, energy bills that are coming up. So they're going up, and again, 34% on an average throughout the country. So it's a huge figure. Um, take a look at the articles. There's a ton of them in the video description below, and share your thoughts on all this stuff. I really want to know what you guys think about this. Now, one story that keeps sticking around is the Zillow story. And uh, there's a great article on why so many people sold their house to Zillow. And it's very simple. Zillow overpaid the majority of these people. They didn't negotiate. They just used an AI program that was absolutely imbecilic in giving these people all this money. So that being said, Zillow is now selling 7,000 plus homes that it has in its arsenal uh, and unloading them at a discounted rate. The rumor is they're going to sell it to one person or one company. We'll see if that comes true. Now, there's a company called Open Door. And Open Door, the CEO of this company, kind of did himself in where he was, you know, cheering the fact that Zillow was doing so bad. And that's the one thing. When people cheer somebody else's demise, people look into that and people find out, you know, if the person's, you know, uh, full of it or not. But Open Door, it's got a problem. There's a great realtor that's got a TikTok channel. Uh, his name is Dean Carver. Never met the man, but I love uh, his TikTok. And uh, he did a TikTok on Open Door. And he found out that over 50% of the Open Door uh, sales in the Phoenix area, they were selling at a loss. 50, like 50.5% 50 or something like that. You can watch the TikTok below. But again, you know, it's kind of ridiculous that Open Door is trying to talk about how great they are and they're uh, selling all these homes at a loss. So share your thoughts on all this stuff. Were you, were you lucky enough to have uh, uh, your home bought by Zillow and their idiotic uh, program? Again, we had someone where they paid over $150,000 more for their house. And uh, one of our, the subscribers sent me information on that. Absolutely crazy. So bravo to them. You know, spend the money and, and, and sock it away for retirement and buy some deferred, uh, um, you know, income investments and things like that. But do what you want to do with the money. So anyway, share your thoughts on all this stuff. I want to know what you guys think about this. Now, one thing you cannot deny is that cryptocurrency is becoming more and more popular and more and more real in our society. Uh, Francis Suarez is the mayor of Miami, okay? He is stating that he wants uh, everything in Miami to be paid with uh, uh, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, and he wants to be the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency capital of the world. Now, Eric Adams, the new mayor of New York, He's saying, you know, pass, uh, you know, we're gonna be the cryptocurrency capital of the world. So you're gonna start seeing changes in the different uh, municipalities, cities, states that are gonna start accepting cryptocurrency. And again, it's, it's here. So Eric Adams has already said he's gonna take his first three paychecks in Bitcoin. Bold move, uh, you know, very interesting. So share your thoughts on this stuff, guys. I really wanna know what you think. You know, Miami's setting up the Miami coin. So you're gonna be able to have a cryptocurrency coin uh, for Miami that they anticipate they will make an absolute fortune on. 
Uh, the other thing is Kroger, the uh, grocery store chain. Uh, they issued a denial this morning where it was said that Kroger was going to start accepting Bitcoin uh, for purchases. Now, again, it's not true. They issued a retraction on Twitter saying that we never agreed to this. This is just absolutely false. And uh, Bitcoin ran up, the price ran up a little bit. And, uh, the, you know, Kroger called it a, basically a pump and dump. The story's in the video description below. Now, the next thing is uh, Shiba Inu. Shiba Inu is the dog coin that's really killing it right now. It's gone up, there's been a little bit of a sell off, but there was a person that had um, put $8,000 in, uh, in a wallet a little over a year ago in Shiba Inu, and this week there was a, uh, there were rumblings because this person started to make moves in the wallet and they moved it to four different locations. The guy had over $5 billion worth of this uh, coin and uh, it was moved to different wallets. What it anticipated was that this guy could basically destroy Shiba Inu uh, in one fell swoop if he wanted to cash out because it wouldn't be that much activity and the price would tank. But, uh, you know, that's not the case. There's all this hype that Robinhood's going to add it, that there's another cryptocurrency exchange with a million members called Kraken that may add it. But again, if this is your thing, share your thoughts on all this stuff and let me know what you think about this because uh, cryptocurrency is here to stay, guys. And uh, yes, there's going to be fake news. Yes, there's going to be ridiculous coins that mean nothing. But uh, uh, there's a lot uh, to be said about all this stuff. Now, one more thing about uh, cold weather prices and stockpiling is from China, okay? Chinese government has just told its citizenry that uh, there's a La Nina weather condition, which basically, that's a West Coast thing. It's a Pacific Ocean thing, which normally means uh, cold water affects the climate and you get cold weather. Well, they're talking about this in China now, and they're saying that the entire country is uh, in for much colder weather in the Northeast and uh, areas in the northern part of the country, they're actually getting colder weather than they've had in over 20 years. Um, that being said, they're telling people to stockpile food uh, in case they cannot leave the house. So, wow, okay, that's serious. And the last story I want to end up with is, uh, uh, is right now there is a shortage of Santa Clauses. Believe it or not, they say that there's not enough people that want to be Santa this year and that there's a shortage from the North Pole. Okay, um, that's sad because kids are gonna get to go out and not see Santa this year. So share your thoughts on all this stuff. Do you guys, you know, I mean, are malls open? I know that they weren't open last year and Santa wasn't out last year, but you know, how are you gonna do it this year? And they're talking about people not wanting to get sick and whatever, but you know, um, again, you know, what do you do? Uh, I know a woman that's a very successful woman that she, every year volunteered and worked uh, uh, the Santa display at one of the malls uh, and just thought it was the most rewarding experience uh, to do that and to give back. So share your thoughts on this and uh, are you gonna see a shortage of Santa? So uh, don't forget to hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button, share this with all your friends and colleagues and don't forget the email list, it's in the video description below. And also the Weeble account. If you wanna trade cryptos or you wanna buy stock, you can get a free share of stock. And the cool thing about this that I learned is if people get a free share of stock, somebody got Apple again this week, you can sell it immediately and cash out and put it back in your, your bank account. So it's free to sign up for it. The link's below. If you put any money, one cent in it, they will give you another share of stock. So onward and upward guys, share your thoughts and all this stuff. And, um, Zero waves out here today. Disappointing, but uh, beautiful place nonetheless. Okay, see you guys very soon.